Hi students, welcome to Smart Locus. In this video, uh, we will see the chapter Plan Growth and Development. So what is growth? Growth is nothing but irreversible permanent increase of an organ or its parts or of an individual cell. That is the definition for growth. Then, in case of plants, plant growth is indeterminate. That is, plants retain the ability to grow throughout their life. This is due to the presence of meristematic cells. That is, in case of plant body, new cells are always being added due to the activity of meristem. So, we can say that plants exhibit open form of growth. That is the growth in which new cells are always being added due to the activity of meristem. The different types of meristems, which we have studied in another chapter, that is anatomy, apical meristem, intercalary meristem, and lateral meristem. Apical, intercalary growth in length, primary growth, lateral growth in girth, secondary. Then, plant growth is measurable. At cellular level, growth is nothing but a consequence of increase in the protoplasmic conduct. But it's very difficult to measure. So there are uh, certain growth parameters which are proportional to it. That is increase in weight, that is fresh weight, dry weight. Then increase in length, increase in volume, increase in number of cells, size, etc. are various growth parameters. In case of, two examples, in case of maize, 17,500 cells are added per hour. So here you see the growth parameter is number of cells. Then in case of watermelon, it grows up to the size of 3,50,000 times. So here the growth parameter is size. Here growth parameter is number of cells. Phases in plant growth. The three phases in plant growth are meristematic phase, elongation phase and maturation phase. The first phase is meristematic phase. This phase consists of actively dividing cells, that is meristematic cells. This meristematic cells are rich in protoplasmic content and they possess large conspicuous nucleus and they have primary thin cellulosic cell wall. And these meristematic cells are rich in plasmodesmetal connections, that is cytoplasmic strands between cells. Cells proximal to meristematic phase are in elongation phase. The features of the cells here increased vacuolation that is formation of vacuole, increased vacuolation, cell enlargement and new cell wall deposition are the features of cells in elongation phase. Then maturation phase proximal to Elongation phase. The cells are in maturation phase. Here, cells attain maximal size in terms of wall thickening and protoplasmic modifications. That means it consists of mature cells. The next about growth rate. Increased growth per unit time is known as growth rate. The two types of growth rate are arithmetic growth rate and geometric growth rate. Here, you see, in arithmetic growth rate, a cell that undergoes mitosis, out of the two daughter cells formed, only one continues to divide. The other one gets differentiated. Whereas in geometric growth rate, out of the two daughter cells formed after mitosis, both continue to divide. So see here, the number increases in arithmetic proportion. Here, the number increases in geometric proportion. Second point, uh, if you plot a graph to show arithmetic growth rate, that is growth parameter against the time, here length is taken, it would be a straight line, a linear curve. Whereas in geometric growth rate, if you plot a graph, it would be a sigmoid curve with the three phases, initial lag phase, then there would be an exponential phase and finally a stationary phase. Third point, equation. Arithmetic growth rate, Lt equals L0 plus Rt. 
LT final length L0 initial length R growth rate T time so LT equals L0 plus RT whereas in geometry growth rate the equation is W1 that is the final uh, weight or final size equals W0 e raised to RT W0 initial weight or initial size R growth rate T time E is the base of natural logarithm and R it is the growth rate it shows the ability of plants to produce two new plant materials that is why it is referred as efficiency index next about quantitative comparison of growth of living systems that is absolute growth and relative growth what is absolute growth total growth measurement and comparison of total growth per unit time that is absolute growth what is relative growth growth of the given system per unit time per unit initial parameter that is the difference between absolute growth and relative growth let us see this one with an example if we consider two leaves leaf a and leaf b the initial size of leaf a is supposed uh, to be 5 cm square and final size is 10 cm square and leaf b initially 50 cm square finally 55 cm square here absolute growth remains the same in both that is the growth is 5 5 becomes 10 50 becomes 55 but the relative growth is more in leaf A because initially here we have to consider initial parameter also so initially we had only 55 cm square now this become 10 cm square that means 100% growth growth doubles whereas here initially we had 50 now it has become 55 only it's about conditions for growth water oxygen nutrients optimum temperature light gravity influences plant growth you will see water turgidity that is a plant cell is having excess water this is necessary for extension growth and this turgidity is necessary to maintain the shape and structure of plant parts water act as a medium for enzymatic activities to oxidize the reserve food materials inside then oxygen is necessary for oxidation of food materials to release energy for growth the nutrients various macro and micro that is essential nutrients macronutrients and micronutrients necessary for the synthesis of protoplasmic content protoplasm then optimum temperature enzymatic activities require optimum temperature light is necessary for plant growth gravity also influences plant growth next about differentiation de-differentiation and re-differentiation first about differentiation what is differentiation is the process in which a plant cell loses the ability to divide that is meristematic cells loses the ability to divide and are structurally and functionally specialized to perform specific functions of the plant body this process is known as differentiation typical example formation of parenchyma cholangyma sclerenchyma that means formation of this permanent tissues from meristem so see meristem undifferentiated and this permanent tissues are differentiated that is the process second de-differentiation that is this permanent tissues that is differentiated tissues regain the ability to divide and becomes meristematic that is de-differentiation typical example formation of interfascicular cambium from medullary rays interfascicular cambium is a meristem is a lateral meristem medullary rays are nothing but parenchyma then re-differentiation here de-differentiated cells again gets differentiated cork cambium is a lateral meristem that is an example for de-differentiated tissue from cork cambium towards outer side cork is formed and towards inner side secondary cortex is formed so cork cambium de-differentiated 
cork and secondary cortex are redifferentiated tissues. Next word plasticity or phenotypic plasticity. Plants follow different pathways in response to the environment or phases of life to produce different kinds of structures. This is known as phenotypic plasticity. If it is in response to phases of life, Example, that is phenotypic plasticity in response to phases of life. Example, heterophily in cotton, coriander, laxpa. Hetero means different, dissimilar. Phil means leaves. So in these cases, juvenile plant and adult plant differ in the shape of leaves, heterophily. The next, heterophily uh, in buttercup. Phenotypic plasticity in response to environment. Example, heterophily in Buttercup. Here in buttercup, actually this is an aquatic plant. The shape of leaf is different in leaves which are in water and leaves which are in air. So see, submerged leaves and the leaves that are exposed to the air. Both show difference in the shape. It's about uh, development. What is development? Development includes all the changes that takes place from seed germination up to senescence. That means it is the sum of growth and differentiation. And this development, plant development, that is influenced by both intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors. Intrinsic means internal, extrinsic means external, that is environment. These intrinsic factors are further categorized into two. That is, intracellular and intercellular. Intracellular factors, that means within the cell, is nothing but genetic factors. Then intercellular factors, that is PGR, plant growth regulators, phytohormones. Then, the extrinsic factors include light, temperature, uh, water, oxygen, nutrients, etc. So next about PGR, plant growth regulators in detail. Plant growth regulators also known as phytohormones. Based on their function, they are categorized into two. That is growth promoters and growth inhibitors. Growth promoters are involved in growth promoting activities. Example, auxin, cytokinin and zibberlin. Uh, auxin, chemically, Oxin is inter compound, whereas cytokinin is chemically adenine derivative. A cytokinin, example for cytokinin is kinetin. Kinetin, it's a complete biochemical name. N6 furfuryl amino purine. Then, gibberlin is chemically terpene. Then, inhibitors, two inhibitors, ethylene and abscisic acid. Ethylene has both growth promoting and inhibiting activities. But it is considered as an inhibitor because it has more growth inhibiting activity. It is chemically ethylene gas only. Abscisic acid is chemically carotenoid derivative. So next let us see. Oxin in detail. Oxin, the word originated from the Latin word. Oxy, that is the root word. Word meaning to grow. Charles Darwin and his son Francis Darwin. They first observed phototropism in canary grass coleoptile, that is growth towards uh, light. Later, another scientist, F. W. Wendt, isolated oxin. That is a natural oxin, IAA only. Isolated oxin from uh, oats, that is avena. Then, oxin was first isolated from human urine only. Yet W and isolated from plants. Oxin was first isolated from human urine. Then the two types of auxins are natural auxin and synthetic auxin. Natural auxin, two examples, IAA, indole acetic acid, IBA, indole butyric acid. Then synthetic auxins, example, 2,4-D and NAA. 2,4-D, 2 for dichlorophenoxy acetic acid. NAA, naphthalene acetic acid. Next of all, functions of oxen. Functions of oxen. First, rooting. 
rooting in stem cuttings. So it induces rooting in stem cuttings. That is why it is commonly used as a rooting hormone in plant tissue culture. Then flowering in pineapple. It induces flowering in pineapple. Third one, role in abscission. What is the role of auxin in abscission? Actually, auxin prevents a leaf drop or fruit drop at early stage, but it promotes the abscission of all the mature parts. So, prevents abscission of young growing parts, promotes abscission of all the mature parts. The next function, apical dominance. Since the concentration of auxin is more at apex, it promotes more growth at the apex, which inhibits lateral growth. This is known as apical dominance. In horticulture, decapitation is practiced. Decapitation is practiced to overcome apical dominance. This is widely used in tea plantations. So. Uh, deca decapitation involves nothing but removal of tip. This is to overcome apical dominance. Or otherwise we can say that this is used for hedge making or promoting lateral growth. The next parthenocarpy. Oxen is used to induce parthenocarpy. That is to produce seedless fruits. Example, tomatoes. So for D is used as a weedicide against dicot weed. It kills dicot weeds. Then it helps in xylem differentiation and promotes cell division. Next about gibberlins. E. Kurosawa first reported that a sterile filtrates of the fungus gibberella physicoroid causes becane disease or foolish seedling disease in rice plants. Later, it was identified that the active substance present in the filtrate were actually GA, gibberlic acid. Various gibberlic acids are discovered so far. They are named as GA1, GA2, GA3, GA4, etc. Among this, GA3 is the most intensely studied form of GA. Next about functions of gibberlin. It is used to increase the stock length in grapes. If stock length in grapes is increased, it would be able to hold more fruits. That increases the yield. Then, it is used to elongate and improve the shape of fruit in apple. To increase the commercial value, it is used to delay senescence, senescence of fruit. This helps to increase the market period of fruits. Then, multi. It is used to speed up malting process in brewing industry. Brewing industry, alcoholic beverage industry. Malting process means here uh, gibberlin. Actually, gibberlin uh, stimulates the synthesis of the enzyme amylase. And amylase breaks, starts into maltose. That process is known as malting. In brewing industry, this process enhances the production of alcohol. Then, here the indirect function given is Zibberlin uh, promotes seed germination by stimulating the production of amylase in sugar cane. It increases the length of stem. That means it increases the yield. Then in conifers, it induces early seed production. Then it causes bolting in plants with rosin habit. Example cabbage. What is bolting? Sudden internodal elongation just prior to flowering. Next about cytokinin. F. Skook, uh, in his experiment, he found that callus from tobacco stem, callus is nothing but mass of undifferentiated cells. So callus formed from tobacco stem proliferates, multiplies. If the nutrient medium contains, along with Oxen, either yeast extract or extract of vascular tissue or coconut milk or DNA. Later, Miller et al. Et al. means a group of scientists under his leadership. Miller et al. identified kinetin. 
kinetin from herring sperm DNA. Herring is a fish found in Pacific Ocean. Remember, uh, kinetin is not yet discovered from plants. So, a cytokinin which is present in, naturally present in plants. Example is zeatin. Zeatin is the cytokinin present in plants. It is named as zeatin because it was isolated from corn kernels. Also from coconut milk. Corn, scientific name, genus name, zea. That is why the name given, zeatin. Cytokinin, it's about functions. Actually the name given, because it is a cytokinesis promoting substance. So it is produced in regions or areas where rapid cell division takes place. That includes root apex, developing shoot buds, young fruits, etc. Then its functions include formation of new leaves, formation of chloroplast, then lateral shoot growth and adventitious shoot formation. See, it promotes lateral shoot growth. That means it helps to overcome apical dominance. So we can say that auxin and cytokinin are antagonistic in case of apical dominance. Antagonistic works just opposite to each other. Then cytokinin delays leaf senescence. Delays leaf senescence by promoting nutrient mobilization to leaves. Since it was first observed by Richmond Lang, it is known as Richmond Lang effect. Next about ethylene. H. H. Cousins, Herbert Henry Cousins, confirmed the release of uh, ethylene from ripened orange that promoted ripening in stored unripened banana. Here, the very interesting activity or a rare physiological phenomena shown by ethylene is ethylene induces fruit ripening and fruit ripening enhances ethylene formation and then the functions of uh, ethylene first about its activity in seedlings it induces triple response in seedlings this triple response includes swelling of the axis horizontal growth and apical hook formation, senescence and abscission. Ethylene promotes senescence and abscission of all the mature parts, especially flowers, leaves, etc. Then it causes fruit ripening. It's commonly used as a uh, ripening hormone. Then it causes climactic, that is respiratory climactic. A sudden increase in the rate of respiration during fruit ripening. That is known as respiratory climactic. Then it's role in dormancy. See, ethylene actually it helps to break dormancy in some cases. For example, in peanut seed, it helps in germination. Similarly, it promotes sprouting of potato tubers. Then, next, it's role in petiole elongation. In deep water rice plants, in deep water rice plants, it helps elongation of petiole so that the upper part of the shoot or leaves remain above water level. This is to protect the plant. Ethylene promotes root hair formation. That means it helps to increase the absorption surface and it helps in the overall growth of the root also. Then ethylene um, promotes flowering in pineapple, not only flowering, it helps to synchronize the fruit set in pineapple. Ethophon is the source of ethylene. And from uh, the solution, plants can readily absorb ethylene. And again, the functions of ethophon are listed in NCRT. Nothing but the functions of ethylene. One function, again function of ethylene only, that is, it increases the number of female flowers in cucumber, which increases the yield. Next about abscisic acid. During 1960s, um, discovery of three different chemicals were reported by different scientists. They are Dormin, Abscission 2 and Inhibitor D. Later it was found that these three are chemically identical 
and given the name abscisic acid. It was discovered for its role in abscission and dormancy. It's a general plant growth inhibitor and it's an inhibitor of plant metabolism. And then in dormancy, what is the role? It induces dormancy. Dormancy is nothing but a period of rest before germination. So it induces dormancy means it uh, inhibits germination. So by inducing dormancy, it helps the seed to withstand desiccation, that is extreme dryness. So in case of uh, seed germination, we can say that this adjusic acid and zibarlic acid are antagonistic. Then it is also known as or commonly known as stress hormone. Because, for example, during water stress, it induces the closing of stomata. So it helps the plant to um, overcome water stress. That is why it is known as stress hormone. Next about photoperiodism. It's nothing but the response of plants to photoperiod, that is uh, day and night period. So see, a flowering in plants, in most of the plants, is influenced by uh, both the presence and absence of light, that is day and night, and the relative duration also. Then, this photoperiodism was first discovered in tobacco plant by Garner and Allard. Then, based on photoperiodic response, plants are categorized into three. They are SDP, short day plant. They flower when the day length is short, that is, uh, shorter than or less than the critical duration of light exposure. Long day plant, they flower when the day length is long, that, that means day length exceeds the critical duration of light. DNP, day neutral plant, there is no correlation between exposure to light and uh, inducing flowering response. Then, leaf is the site of perception of food period. Then, shoot apex. After getting exposure, shoot apex will modify to form flower apex. Flower is nothing but modified shoot. Next about vernalization. That is promotion of flowering by uh, low temperature is known as vernalization. Vernalization prevents precocious reproductive development and enables plants to have sufficient time to reach maturity. So what is precocious reproductive development? In case of plants, precocious reproductive development means without completing uh, vegetative growth or without attaining maturity. That means without completing the growth of stem, root and leaf. It won't be able to support reproductive growth, fertilization, formation of seed and all. So that is known as precocious reproductive development. Vernalization prevents precocious reproductive development. Some plants like wheat, barley, rye, they produce two types of varieties. That is spring variety and winter variety. Spring variety, seeds of this variety can be planted in a spring season. But winter variety should not be planted in spring season. If we plant winter variety in spring season, it will fail to develop, fail to germinate. It should be planted in late autumn to get complete winter exposure. That means a seed of winter variety requires low temperature. Another example for vernalization can be seen in biennial plants. Biennial plants means they are monocarpic. That is, they flower only once in their lifetime and they die in the second growing season. An example, sugar beet, carrot, cabbage and all. Here, if its growth is subjected to cold treatment, then a subsequent flowering response can be induced.